Hello there. Welcome to Faith and Justice, a Sunday morning session that focuses on connecting faith with justice. Another way of saying this is that we're going to learn and talk about how to embody what we believe in our minds with the actions of our words, our hands, and our feet. It's an outward expression of an inward spiritual grace, something that is really growing inside of you, you know, not just a list of new things that you've got to do. It's inward growth, outward expression. You're going to hear the terms mercy and justice frequently. As a spiritual exercise for this coming week, I invite you to get a sheet of paper and a pen. I want you to make two columns, one labeled mercy, one labeled justice. On the outside of those two columns, I want you to label received and then draw a horizontal line about midway down and then make another note, another word, uh, given. So you've got two columns, mercy and justice, and then two labels going down, received and given. And the columns are segmented. So you've got a quadrant, okay? Um, so each week we're going to be studying a scripture and we're going to use the social principles of the United Methodist Church. Social principles guide us in applying scriptures to issues that society faces every day. The founder of Methodism, John Wesley, was an Anglican priest who was angered, dismayed by the church people not practicing what it was that they spoke in worship, what it was that they believed what was in their very doctrines. Maybe he asked, if we believe these things about mercy and justice, why is the world so filled with oppression and injustice? I ask this question today, although I live much later um, than John Wesley. He believed that by applying scriptures to society's problems, we could change the world. So today we're going to begin with a passage, and that passage is Matthew 25. Uh, we're going to read verses 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on the right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you, a stranger, and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison or, and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. Then he will say to those on the left, depart. From me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you didn't clothe me. I was sick, 
and in prison, and you didn't look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and not help you? He will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is one of the defining scriptures for Christians, and in it, we see a sense of oneness, the unity of Jesus Christ with those who suffer. It's comforting to know that he's that close to those who suffer. Sometimes we are the ones who are giving the water to one who is thirsty. Other times, we're the ones who are thirsty. When we experience something firsthand, it helps build empathy for others who suffer. We start to feel what others feel. We begin to understand at a deeper level. When you were a child, I want you to revert back for a moment. Did anyone ever pin you down and make you cry uncle or mercy before letting you go? Oppression can easily be illustrated by this example. It's someone being held down, unable to stand fully on their own. We understand mercy by this example. Justice would ask, why are you being held down until the root causes of oppression are exposed and eliminated? So it wouldn't just get rid of the one person who's holding you down. It would actually address the system that made that possible. As followers of Christ and as United Methodists, we agreed to, and I'm going to read, these are our vows, our baptismal vows. On behalf of the whole church, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness? reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin. And remember, repent means turn around. So it's not that you just say, oops, I'm sorry, and then keep doing it. You actually are convicted in your heart that this is not where God is really wanting me to be. And so you change your behavior. Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? These three lines out of our baptismal vows show that we are not only tasked with confronting injustice, and bringing about justice, even while we also provide comfort to those who are hurting from injustice, we don't just ignore the injustice. We do both. We care for the person and we tackle the system that has made that oppression possible. This is part of who we are called to be. And God doesn't just um, task us with this. God actually gives us the power to do this so that inside we have renewed strength and power to do these things, to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. As we begin looking at these areas of mercy, justice, faith, within the Sunday morning sessions connecting faith and justice, I hope that you'll feel that you are drawing nearer to God and that you feel community through these Zoom sessions. Thanks so much for watching.